Where does humanity originate? This question has inspired countless narratives throughout human history, but none truly answer the question of our origin. Africa's vast savanna, steaming with life, bathed in golden sunshine, this was the landscape in which our ancestors set forth on their epic evolutionary journey, culminating in us. Long before ancient cultures and religions came into existence, Homo sapiens emerged from Africa's heart, specifically modern-day Ethiopia, branching out towards the Mediterranean, Middle East and Eastern regions. But Africa is not only the birthplace of Homo sapiens, surprisingly it also cradles the diverse spectrum of religions that have shaped our spiritual landscapes. From the enchanting Yoruba traditions to the voodoo, to the mystical practices of Nubian lion-headed goddess influencing powerful deities such as Isis and Sekhmet, Africa's prehistoric religious heritage is truly mind-blowing. What are some Africa's old tribal religions and how they are intertwined into our modern day belief systems? We'll try to find out together in the new episode of Secret Origins. Welcome. Africa isn't merely our ancestral homeland, it is the cradle of humanity. But how can we believe this claim? The evidence lies within the African soil. We've unearthed bones of Homo sapiens across Africa, leaving no doubt about its role as our birthplace. The deeper we delve into these rock layers, the more traces of Homo sapiens we uncover compared to the other parts of the world. Africa's archaeological treasures span from the fossil-rich Great Rift Valley to the stunning rock art of the Sahara, each piece serving as a testament to our shared heritage. As we journey from Africa's heart to the land of the pharaohs, ancient Egypt, we find roots of civilization stretching deep into the African continent, reflected in the art, customs and deities of ancient Egyptians. Fascinating discoveries from the Great Rift Valley, such as the ancient hominid fossils in Ethiopia and Kenya, give us invaluable insights into our early evolution. So, it's clear that our journey as species is firmly rooted in the African landscape. Our journey as Homo sapiens can be traced back to Africa, the continent that holds the oldest remains of our species, dating back 300,000 years. This tells us that our human saga truly began amidst the vast and diverse landscapes of Africa, carrying not only our oldest fossils, but also the genetic imprints of our shared heritage. Consider Lucy, the renowned 3.2 million year old fossil discovered in 1974 in Ethiopia. This find transformed our understanding of human evolution. Lucy, belonging to the species Australopithecus afarensis, provided key insight into our evolutionary stages. She combined both human and apple-like features, symbolizing a transition between our primate ancestors and modern humans. The well-preserved skeleton allowed us to study her anatomy, affirming bipedalism a significant milestone in our evolution and further cementing Africa as humanity's cradle. Also rooted in Ethiopia, the place where Lucy was found is the Ethiopian traditional religion. Predating the arrival of Christianity and Islam by millennia, this belief system encompasses a range of spiritual beliefs and practices deeply ingrained in Ethiopian culture. Characterized by a profound connection to nature, ancestral worship and belief in supernatural forces, this faith incorporates elements of animism. Rituals and ceremonies are performed at sacred sites, aiming to appease and receive blessings from ancestral spirits and deities. This religious practice further underscores Ethiopia's pivotal role in the narrative of human history. The Ethiopian religion is not a uniform belief system, but a conglomerate of a diverse regional customs. Its practice varies among ethnic groups, each adding their unique cultural elements. Despite a decline due to the spread of Christianity and Islam, the faith continues to hold significance, especially in rural areas where traditional customs thrive. The Axumai Empire, present-day Ethiopia, 
practiced a polytheistic faith known as Axumite religion. This belief system evolving from the Bronze Age to antiquity involved a pantheon of deities with Mahrum associated with the sky, rain, fertility and stars as the supreme god. The Axumite kings were seen as a direct descendants of Mahrum, cementing their divine legitimacy. Alongside deity worship, ancestor veneration played a key role in their practices. The faith significantly influenced the political and cultural aspects of the empire, evident in erected temples and celebratory rituals. However, the distinct Axumite religion faded as Christianity and Islam took hold. The pre-dynastic Nubian religion of ancient Sudan is lesser known but provides fascinating insights through archaeological evidence and historical accounts. It bore several similarities with the ancient Egyptian religion, suggesting a considerable cultural and religious exchange. Their pantheons reflected shared deities and religious iconography often displayed analogous motives such as lions, bulls and snakes. Notably, the Nubian and Egyptian religions also shared sacred symbols such as the Ankh symbolizing eternal life. The Nubian burial practices, especially in the Karma culture, mirrored the Egyptian tradition, featuring pyramid-like structures and tombs. Both the Nubian and Egyptian cultures shared a belief in the afterlife and provided grave goods for the deceased. The proximity and historical interaction between Nubia and Egypt facilitated cultural and religious exchanges. This is evident in the adoption of religious practices and titles by the rulers from both civilizations. The depth of these influences vary depending on the historical period and specific cultures involved. Dadun, a lion-headed god symbolizing strength and protection, played a significant role in ancient Nubian religion, associated with wealth, prosperity and agricultural fertility. Dadun was also linked with the Nile River's annual flooding, which brought nutrient-rich sediments for fertile harvests. Nubian rulers often sought Dadun's blessings for their kingdom's prosperity. Despite the decline of the Kingdom of Kush, the advent of Christianity and Islam, remnants of Dadun's worship are seen in archaeological remains and inscriptions. The lion-headed god symbolized the Nubians' deep connection to nature, aspirations for abundance and respect for the Nile's life-giving properties. The worship of Didun, the lion-headed Nubian god, represented the pursuit of prosperity and well-being for the ancient Nubian communities. Today, Didun symbolizes the rich spiritual traditions of ancient Nubia. The lioness-headed goddess Sekhmet, revered in ancient Egypt for her attributes of war, healing and protection, shows the historical, cultural and religious ties between Nubia and Egypt. Kemet, the ancient Egyptian religion was a complex polytheistic belief system that spanned millennia. The religion held that gods controlled every aspect of life and the pharaoh was a god on earth. Key deities included Ra, Osiris, Isis and Horus. The Egyptians believed in afterlife where the soul would be judged and if found worthy, granted eternal life. Archaeologists have found some of the world's oldest structures in Wadi Alpha, modern-day Sudan, previously known as Upper Egypt, exemplifying the antiquity of the region's civilizations. They've uncovered structures in Wadi Alpha, Sudan, dating to a thousand years BCE. These simple dwellings, consisting of oval depressions lined with sandstone slabs, served as mobile homes for ancient hunter-gatherers. The Egyptian concept of mat, representing cosmic order, is comparable to Dinka beliefs showing shared spiritual ideas before Egypt's centralized dynastic rule beginning around 3100 BCE. The Egyptian Book of the Death illustrates a ceremony where the deceased actions are judged in the afterlife, a practice rooted in the concept of mat. This may have influenced the idea of destiny or maktub in Islam, yet Islam wasn't the first monotheistic faith in Africa. The Atenist movement or the worship of the Aten 
emerged in the 14th century BCE under Pharaoh Akhenaten, marking a departure from Egypt's traditional polytheism. Aten, a sun deity, was elevated to the status of the soul god by Akhenaten, who even changed his name to honor the deity. His motivations for the shift are unclear, but might involve personal belief or political ambition. Akhenaten relocated the capital to a new city and centralized worship around Aden, closing other temples. His monotheistic reforms, however, failed after his death. After his death, his son Tutankhamun reversed the Atenist reforms, restoring the traditional polytheistic worship and erasing most Atenist influences. When we venture further into West Africa, we find references to the inhabitants of this region in ancient sources. For example, Herodotus, an ancient Greek historian, often credited as the father of history, made mention of a group known as the Atlantis. According to Herodotus, the Atlantis were a tribe from Libya living in the western parts of North Africa. He describes the Atlanteans as a people residing near the Atlas Mountains, which are found in what is now Morocco and Algiers. Herodotus depicts them as skilled charioteers and formidable warriors. Moving even further south, we find the Yoruba people of ancient Nigeria. The Yoruba are a West African ethnic group mainly found in Nigeria, but also in parts of Benin and Togo. Their religion bears resembles to ancient Greco-Roman paganism, thought it is considerably older and features an interesting collection of deities with diverse responsibilities. Take Eshu for instance. Also known as Elegba or Eshu, this deity is a key figure in the Ifa or Orisha religion of the Yoruba people. Eshu is a complicated and multi-faced divinity frequently portrayed as a trickster and acting as a messenger and mediator between humans and the other Orishas, as well as between humans and Oludumer, the supreme being. Eshu is believed to carry human prayers, sacrifices and offerings to the divine realm, mirroring the roles of Hermes in Greek mythology and Thoth in Egyptian mythology. He serves as a link between the physical and spiritual realms, much like an angel or a messenger deity such as Mithras. He facilitates communication between these two realms. In Yoruba religious ceremonies, Eshu is invoked at the start as a protector and gatekeeper. His presence is required to open communication channels and ensure that prayers and offerings reach their intended recipients. Rituals dedicated to Eshu often involve offerings of palm oil, cola nuts and alcoholic beverages like wine which are believed to placate him. While Islamic critics have often portrayed Eshu as a devil or evil entity, he is not either of these. Instead, he is known as a trickster who gives misfortune to those who do not offer tributes or are spiritually inexperienced. Eshu is also considered a divine messenger, a negotiator between negative and positive forces, an enforcer of the universal law. He is believed to enhance the power derived from herbal medicines and esoteric practices like alchemy. The Yoruba people believe that Eshu alongside other Orishas or divinities has existed since the dawn of time and continues to inhabit in the spiritual realm. They are timeless beings that transcend human perceptions of time. Orishas are viewed as intermediaries between humans and the supreme being, Olu Dumare or Olu Ruin. These deities are seen as accessible and can be invoked. According to Alex Kuachu, Olu Dumare is the supreme almighty god of the Yoruba people and not an Orisha. Early missionaries to West Africa and the African diaspora often portrayed Olu Dumare as a distant but powerful deity whose actions and locations are obscure. Contrary to these portrayals, Olu Dumare is a present and powerful god who is superior to the Orishas and all people on earth. Obatala, known as the Sky Father, is the creator deity associated with wisdom, purity and justice within the Yoruba pantheon. 
Obatala, often represented as an elderly man, is highly represented as the father of all the Orishas, the deities in the Yoruba tradition. Sango is the god of thunder, lightning and justice, embodying power, bravery and masculinity. Yamoja is the goddess of the sea, motherhood and fertility, recognized as caring and protective figure associated with compassion and healing. Ogun, the god of iron, war and technology, symbolizes strength, craftsmanship and determination. Oya, the goddess of wind, storms and change, represents transformation, female power and the spirit of commerce. Osun or Oshun, the goddess of rivers, love, fertility and beauty, is linked to femininity, sensuality and prosperity. These are just some of the numerous Orishas worshipped in the Yoruba tradition. The veneration of these deities involves diverse ceremonies, rituals and offerings such as drumming, prayers, dance, divination and the presentation of specific foods, drinks and potions. Devotees perform these rites to seek the Orisha's favor, guidance and protection and blessings. Often participants experience psychedelic states akin to the Eleusinian mysteries in Athens. Voodoo's origins, known as Vodun in Africa, can be traced back thousands of years. Voodoo evolved as a syncretic religion blending various indigenous African beliefs with Christianity and other external influences. Voodoo has its roots in West Africa, particularly in regions now known as Benin, Togo and Nigeria. The term voodoo doll typically refers to an effigy used for pin insertion. The practices related to the voodoo doll are derived from various forms of magical traditions held by the ancient Africans. While it's challenging to determine the exact age of voodoo as we know it today, the roots of this religion stretch deep into the ancient African magical traditions. Voodoo represents a robust spiritual tradition encapsulating the ancestral wisdom and cultural heritage of African communities. Islam's spread across Africa was a gradual, intricate process spanning several centuries. It was introduced to Africa through diverse means such as trade routes, migrations, missionary endeavors, warfare and forced conversions. This diffusion of Islam has left a significant imprint on the socio-cultural, political and religious landscapes of Africa. The first contact between Islam and Africa can be traced back to the era of the Prophet Muhammad in the 7th century. At this time, Muslim traders from the Arabian Peninsula established trade networks that linked the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean with the East African coast. One of the earliest regions to accept Islam was North Africa, where Muslims' armies from Arabia expanded into regions like Egypt and Maghreb introducing Islam along the way. The Umayyad Caliphate established control over North Africa, which led to the conversion of the local Berber tribes and the creation of Islamic State such as the Fatimid Caliphate. Islam further penetrated inland through intermarriage, trade and the establishment of Islamic educational centers. Islam became a conduit for cultural exchange, introducing new architectural styles, educational institutions and trade networks. This led to diverse Islamic movements like the Sufi Brotherhoods, which incorporated local customs and beliefs into their spiritual practices. Before Islam's widespread diffusion across the African continent, Christianity rose and reigned supreme. The Nag Hammadi texts, also referred to as the Nag Hammadi Library or the Gnostic Gospels, were discovered in 1945 near the ancient town of Nag Hammadi in Upper Egypt. These texts are instrumental in the illuminating a sect of a early Christianity known as Gnosticism. In December 1945, a group of local farmers found a large jar containing a collection of ancient manuscripts buried in the desert near Nag Hammadi. These texts, written in Coptic, an Egyptian language that used the Greek alphabet, encompassed a diverse range of religious and philosophical works. These included Gnostic Christian writings previously unknown or lost to history.
The Nag Hammadi Library comprised 52 texts, including various Gnostic Gospels, apocryphal works and philosophical treaties such as the Gospel of Thomas. This collection of sayings attributed to Jesus may be the oldest known source of Jesus' words found in Egypt. The Nag Hammadi Christians, as revealed in their writings, provide a unique insight into the multi-faced religious scene of early Christianity prior to Islam. They contribute to our understanding of the rich diversity of religious thought in the ancient world. Members of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church who claim to possess the Ark of the Covenant are an integral part of this tradition. According to their religious narrative, the Ark of the Covenant, a sacred chest designed to hold the Ten Commandments given by God to Moses, was transported to Ethiopia and has been safeguarded there for centuries. The widespread belief is that the Ark resides in Ethiopia, having been carried there from Jerusalem during the era of King Solomon. From the monumental discovery of Lucy, the ancient fossil that has fundamentally reshaped our understanding of human evolution, to the unforgettable grand art of Egyptian civilization, we've touched the very heartbeat of our collective past. But before that, let's reflect for a moment on the eye-inspiring pyramids in the enigmatic Sphinx. These symbols of ancient wisdom and engineering brilliance are not merely relics of the past, but timeless legacies that reverberate in our world today. They remind us of a civilization whose wisdom and knowledge permeated the collective consciousness of humanity, shaping art, architecture and even the inception of science. Isn't it astounding to realize that these ancient achievements continue to influence our present world? How much of Africa's wisdom and knowledge have we absorbed, knowingly or unknowingly, in our everyday lives? How has the legacy of ancient civilizations like that of Egypt shaped our understanding of the world and our place within it? So, keep questioning, keep exploring, keep connecting the dots of our human story. And who knows, you might discover that Africa, in its riches, and complexity isn't just a distant birthplace of humanity, but a mirror reflecting our shape, past, present and possibly our future. We bow before you and thank you for watching another episode of Secret Origins. Keep your minds open and until we meet again.